Welcome back to Cheddar Business, everyone. On Monday saw the Dow suffer its worst one-day drop since January 3rd, while the S&P and the NASDAQ hadn't seen a day like it since early December. Joining us now is David Stockman. He's the former director of the Office of Management and Budget under President Ronald Reagan. He's also the author of Peak Trump, The Undrainable Swamp and the Fantasy of MAGA. Uh, David, it's great to have you on Cheddar. Thanks Happy for joining to be us here. Today. Look, a huge sell-off yesterday. Right. Uh, what do you make of the escalation of the trade war between the U.S. and China? Well, I think yesterday was a wake-up call. I don't think this trade war is going to end anytime soon. you got two fundamentally incompatible economies. You have a policy being driven by, you know, uh, a guy who's, uh, you know, lost his lunch, I think. Trump has no clue what he's doing. He's sliding by the seat of his pants. He's a hopeless protectionist. He doesn't really know what he wants, and he has no clue how this is going to unfold. So I think we have big trouble ahead. So why do Republicans, the party of Reagan, right. why do they seem to be going along with Trump? <laughs> I think they're going along with Trump because the GDP was, had a three in it last quarter, and because we're at the end of a business cycle where the whole economy looks good. My point in peak Trump is the peak is behind us. The market peaked last September at 29.41. I, we're now triple peak. I don't think we're going back. The economy is in month 118 of the longest, weakest expansion in history. We got headwinds everywhere. We got a federal debt that's out of control. We have a Fed that waited way too long to tighten and now doesn't know what to do. We have Europe, which I think is uh, rolling over into another recession. We have what I call the Red Ponzi in China struggling with 40 trillion of debt. None of these things uh, suggest there's smooth sailing ahead. I think they all suggest that there's a huge risk that some kind of black swan or orange swan, as the case may be, uh, <laughs> is likely to upset the whole apple cart. You have to assume that recessions haven't been outlawed. And what's going to happen when we get a recession and the market's way up in the stratosphere and the federal budget is already running 1.2 trillion of red ink and then revenue falls and expenditures soar, we're going to have the biggest mess you can ever imagine. So given all these headwinds that you listed yeah. out, you said recessions haven't been outlawed. Do you think this is, do you think Trump is aware of these factors? Do you think he feels the pressure to get a, a trade deal done with China? Do you think he is capable of getting a deal done that will be beneficial for U.S. markets? No, I think he's delusional. He thinks he has far more power, that he's far more skilled at the art of the deal and negotiation than, than he really is. Uh, and so I don't think any deal is going to get done at all. And I think he believes the economy is far stronger than it actually is because we've had some aberration in the numbers which aren't sustainable. In other words, we've had some inventory buildup and we've had all this turmoil in trade that pulled imports forward. If you strain that out, the economy's growing at less than 2% a year. It's not a boom. If you actually look at Trump's first 28 report cards on jobs, 202,000 per month. Obama's last 28 report cards uh, before the election, 220,000 per month. There's been no acceleration, there's no boom. What we have is an aging business cycle that's coming to the end of the road and we've done nothing to get prepared for the trouble that's ahead. What, what is the Fed going to do? The interest rate is only 2.4% and Trump is complaining. Its balance sheet is still almost $4 trillion. Uh, what is the uh, uh, fiscal policy going to do when we're already locked in uh, to a borrowing rate at the end, the tippy top of a business cycle of $1.2 trillion a year? We've never been in these circumstances before. And so therefore, I think we have to get over this recency bias, which says, well, last couple of quarters look pretty good, so what's to worry? There's everything to worry, because the last 30 years have been taking us to a point of so much speculation and so much debt. Now, remember, we had the financial crisis. People don't even remember that anymore, but we did have it in 2008. Uh, and they said it was a wake-up call. We got too much debt. We need to deleverage, right? Well, there was 53 trillion of debt on the U.S. economy then. This is uh, mid-2008, public, private, business, households, government. Today, it's 72 trillion. All right, we went from 53 trillion, which was too high, to 73 trillion. We've added 20 trillion right. of debt. That did give us the kind of uh, 
you know, appearance of a recovery in prosperity. But really, we only doubled down, and now we're going to face the music in a far weaker position with a madman in the Oval Office who's home alone. And what I mean by that is, who are his advisors nowadays, okay? I mean, Steve Mnuchin is an 80-pound political weakling who gives yes men a bad name, okay? Larry Kudlow has been snorting bullish ethers down on Wall Street for so long that he's not even an economist. Peter Navarro would rather have a real war with China rather than a trade war. And, you know, Wilbur Ross may have a heartbeat or not. I, I don't know, but he's, he's as bad uh, in terms of trade policy as Trump. So it's all being run by Bob Lighthizer, who I know from way back when I was on Capitol Hill and in the Reagan White House in the early 80s. He's a lifelong swamp preacher who wants to make government bigger and better and more intrusive. And that's the kind of trade deal he wants. It's really for big business. It's not for jobs and the economy. What do you think Reagan would think of President Trump? He would be horrified. He would be horrified because Ronald Reagan was a small government guy. He was a free trade guy. He was a free market guy. He, he believed in fiscal uh, uh, you know, rectitude, and he was not for hectoring the Fed for easy money. When Volcker put on the brakes and interest rates went into you know, double digits, Ronald Reagan said, we have to do it. We've got to bite the bullet. We've got to get rid of this inflation and let the Fed uh, restore sound money. So everything that Reagan stood for, Trump is really against, okay? He is a hopeless mercantilist protectionist. He is the worst big spender we've ever had in the Oval Office on the Republican side. Uh, and, you know, he's, he's a bombastic gas I, I guess I, I go back to my earlier question. I just have trouble understanding why Republicans are, are buying into this and why Republican senators and, and representatives don't stand up for the party and yeah. stand up for the legacy of the Republican Party against Trump. I could give you an anecdote from my own history. In January 1973, I was a young guy on Capitol Hill. Nixon was riding high. He had won the uh, election 44 million to 28 million. Wasn't a squeaker, squeaker like Trump. Uh, swept the whole uh, electoral college. He told his whole cabinet, you got to resign. I'm so strong, I don't need you. And within 18 months, they had him on the helicopter and sending him out of town because the economy went down in the interim. In other words, as long as the economy was showing decent numbers, the Republicans kept quiet. And when the economy and the stock market went down 38 percent, they were gone. We only have 10 seconds for this yes. answer, but is there a challenger to Trump you're behind right now? Probably not. Okay. <laughs> we'll come back when there is. Okay. A big thank you, know. you to former director of the Office of Management and Budget under President Ronald Reagan. He's also the author of Peak Trump, The Undrainable Swamp, and the Fantasy of MAGA. Thank you so much for thank joining you. us.